Excuse me, Hi guys. It is another, I don't know, just kind of an average winter day here. Just a normal winter day here in early 2023. It is Sunday, January 8th. We are one week in to, uh, <laughs> to whatever this rocket ride is going to turn out to be. Uh, so what are we going to do today? I want to thank Alert Tribes member Brother Roy for uh, sending me today's Chronicle of the Collapse. Oh yeah, but before uh, I do, I do want to send out a big thank you to Mary for her kind support of whatever it is I do on this channel by joining my Patreon here at Collapse Chronicles. Uh, guys, I don't have a monetized channel, but anyone who wants to throw me a few dollars for whatever it is that I do, you can always find links to my Patreon and PayPal, whatever, in the introductions to all my videos including this one so thank you Mary and thank you brother Roy so let's get into it now this is from uh, this lefty uh, website called sheer post which is from this uh, fellow named Robert Shear uh, just one of the the old-school lefties I would call him I don't know if Robert would call himself a doomer or not but and I don't even know if the fellow that Robert is interviewing this week would call himself a doomer this is a man I have never heard of in my life a fellow named Dr. Warren Hearn H-E-R-N uh, so on today's sheer post Dr. Warren Hearn, humans are a metas, mes, metastasizing, is it metastasizing or metastasizing cancer terminating life on the planet? Yes, whether we're metastasizing or not, humans are a cancer terminating life on the planet. Physician and anthropology scholar Dr. Warren Hearn delves into some of the most upsetting aspects of human behavior as a fatal threat to all life on Earth in the near future. Sums it up pretty well. So, anyway, Robert uh, has his own YouTube channel called Sheer intelligence and uh, so you can find this 43 minutes uh, YouTube I will put the link uh, here and then you will then you can go on and listen to Robert uh, <clears throat> interviewing uh, you know having the uh, interviewer Warren so you can hear that conversation yourself uh, but just to like whet your appetite for it, what I'm going to do is, just for time's sake, I'm going to kind of mash up uh, what Warren, Dr. Warren Hearn has to say after this brief introduction by Robert. But you can, for the full context, you really need to go spend 43 minutes, shut me up right now and go spend the 43 minutes, listen to the man talk himself. So we're just going to start out with Robert here. It is not an exaggeration to call the future of the planet an apocalyptic, extinction-bearing time, according to physician and anthropologist Dr. Warren Hearn. Hearn joins Shear Intelligence host Robert Shear this week to discuss his latest book, Homo ecophagus, a deep diagnosis to save the earth. 
Apart from conducting decades of research in fertility and population trends <clears throat> in the Peruvian Amazon, Hearn has had his clinical and epidemiological research published widely in respected journals as well as his public advocacy of reproductive rights appear in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and other publications. So anyway guys, I'm not going to read Robert's part. Uh, so there's, it's going to be a little bit jarring in some of the transitions. I'm just going to do a mashup of the first, oh, maybe one-third of this video, and you can take it from here. Okay. Take it away, Dr. Warren Hearn. <clears throat> what I'm saying in the book is that the human species now has all the major characteristics of a malignant process on the planet and that what we are doing will lead to our own extinction as well as the extinction of a lot of other species. In fact, right now we are conducting the sixth major extinction in the history of the planet that I call the Anthropocene Extinction Event, which we are conducting. <clears throat> there have been five major extinction events of the last half billion years, and we are now arranging the sixth one, so that if we continue what we are doing, we would arrange the biosphere even up so that we cannot survive and many other species cannot survive. We'll be back to the primordial soup that we started with as one-cell organisms and that is where we are heading. Yes. Um, it is a stark diagnosis and the prognosis is not good. Cancers don't stop being cancers. And so the cancer continues until the host organism has ceased to function. It has died. In our case, the host organism is the biosphere, and we have been attacking it throughout our entire existence as a species most of the time and the last, particularly in the last 10,000 years. Most of the time in the past, particularly in the last 10,000 years. So the title of the book, Homo Ecophagus, means the man who devours the ecosystem and so our scientific species, so our scientific name as a species is Homo sapiens. Sapiens. So, a wise, wise man. And that makes us the most misnamed species on the planet. We are not wise. We are destroying the biosphere. So my new name for the human species is Homo ecophagus, the man who devours the ecosystem. <clears throat> and also it means that we are a superorganism on the planet that has all the major characteristics of a malignant process. <coughs> The four main characteristics of a malignant process that I learned in medical school are rapid, uncontrolled growth, invasion and destruction of adjacent normal tissues, in this case, ecosystems, <clears throat> metastases and metastasis and distant colonization and data differentiation 
which requires a little translation, but that's the basic diagnosis. The prognosis is terminal disease unless we change what we are doing. Hmm. The difference between us and cancer is that we can think and we can decide not to be a cancer. Yes. Uh, so uh, we're getting a little cognitive dissonance, which I'll talk about in a minute. <clears throat> it has unfortunately been a characteristic, characteristic of the human species to change the environment radically from the very beginning. <clears throat> That became much more prevalent in the last 10, 20,000 years. For example, when human beings arrived in pristine ecosystems such as Australia, the South Pacific, and North America that had not been inhabited by human beings, they immediately made a lot of species extinct. That has been going on for tens of thousands of years. And when the Pleistocene hunters came across the Bering Land Bridge into North America 15,000 years ago, whenever it was, a lot of important megafauna species went extinct almost instantaneously. But we are now, with the Industrial Revolution, we have destructive technologies that apply this on a mass scale. <clears throat> and we are now at the point where we have changed climate already and we're changing it as we speak to the point where it will not support humans, organisms. We are not adapted to the heat levels that we are going to experience. And that means a lot of other species are going to go extinct. And so we are, conduct we are conducting what I call the Anthropocene extinction event, which will be the sixth extinction event that the world has experienced in the last half billion years. <clears throat> It's very tempting to look for culprits and to blame somebody. But if you are a human being, you are part of the problem. You can't help being part of the problem. And you use resources and people in the United States, for example, use far more resources than people in other parts of the world. It's true, I work with the Shipibo Indians in the Peruvian Amazon, and they have had very little impact on the environment over thousands of years. But now, the destructive technology is brought into that environment, and they can and they cannot help participating in it. That is true for traditional societies all over the world. The hunter-gatherer societies had very little impact, but industrial society does. So, to the extent that any human beings who are involved with industrial society, you are part of the problem. So, I think that when we have fossil fuels, for example, that we've been using since the beginning of the Industrial Age, that that has a major effect on the climate. And we have already changed the climate almost irreversibly at this point. So, the question is, how much longer would we be able to survive? And I think my point would be, unless we change what we're doing, not much longer. I think we will be lucky to make it by the end of the century. 
<clears throat> it's a complicated problem because we are in an industrial society dependent on fossil fuels. We have tremendous energy demands. And now we have 8 billion people on the planet, and the human population has been doubling every 40 or 50 years. <clears throat> and I think that as long as the human population is growing, there is no hope of solving these problems. There is no hope. And it goes on from there. Okay, so anyway, that was just a, 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 a small mashup of, of what this educated, intelligent man uh, who knows more about uh, the science to back up uh, the collapse of this planet then he's probably in the top 1% of the people who get this. All right. Uh, obviously, the, 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 this, this man knows how doomed we are. Uh, what did he say? A cancer cannot stop being a cancer. Humans are cancer. A cancer cannot stop being a cancer. Uh, there is no hope. And then he says the difference between humans and cancer after he calls us correctly a cancer. Then he says, well, I guess we're not a cancer because we can decide to stop being cancers. And, and then uh, he, he goes through and little by little, you know, here comes the hopium, the, the, this apocalyptic hopium bullshit. Uh, you know, as this goes along, and, and, and to Robert Shear's credit, all right, to Robert's credit, <clears throat> he does gently push back against uh, his guest uh, on his podcast. Uh, and, 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 and I say gently push back, he gently pushes the BS detected button. Uh, Robert Shear is not swallowing the apocalyptimism and the hopium, as he says gently at the very end in his closing comments that, that, that he's not buying it. Robert Shear's not buying it. Uh, I sure as hell am not buying it. A and I, I really have a hard time uh, believing uh, that this dude uh, saying this is buying it. Uh, he knows damn well that cancers are not they cannot, we cannot stop eating our host. We can't do it. There is no hope. Uh, yet he prattles on and on. You know, this is one of the major reasons uh, that I no longer uh, interview people on, on, on my channel. It's... Uh, you know, I, I know what Robert uh, was thinking is, you know, e e you know, even the title of the book, uh, you know, this man uh, is clearly uh, in, in favor of, uh, of prolonging civilization uh, and prolonging the human species. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's this hopium crap. I, I, I just got so sick and tired of hearing it. Interview after interview after interview with uh, people I was having from, you know, <clears throat> people like this. Uh, and, 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 and after, you know, the hundredth uh, person coming on here uh, telling me, me all the ways we're doomed and, and, and then to go off 
out into La La Land, out into this happy horse shit. I just got sick and tired of it. Pull your head out of your ass. Uh, I ain't, I ain't falling for it. But, but you know, I, I, I mean, people like this man. Well, obviously, he wants to sell books. Uh, but, but you know, they're taking time out of their busy schedules to come on your podcast. <clears throat> what, what are you going to do? It's not a debate. Uh, you know, I invite these people to come on and, uh, and, and talk about the biggest story in, in a half billion years. Uh, oh, anyway... What are we going to do uh, with the hopium and the apocalyptimism? But anyway, at least go listen to the first half of this excellent interview uh, here on L Listen for Yourself. And I'm sure you can hear the frustration in Robert Shear's voice. Uh, <laughs> when this apocalyptic starts going off the rails uh, in the second half of the interview. <clears throat> anyway, I have to wrap this up so I can get back to being part of the problem. How can I be part of the problem here as a member of the industrial civilization? My guys.